This episode is brought to you by Novilla Mattresses. When it comes to your mother, you want her sleeping in a comfortable bed. When she's with me, she won't have to worry about that because I sleep on a Novilla mattress. Let me tell you, when your mom is at my place, she is sleeping on a very comfortable mattress and she is going to get you one as well. Meet their Bliss Organic Memory Foam Mattress. Perfect for those who want a cool, dry, undisturbed sleep throughout the night, made with organic bamboo charcoal fiber, excellent motion isolation, cooling gel infused memory foam that fits all bed frames and is reasonably priced. Perfect for if you want an inexpensive mattress for you, your children, or even for your guest room. It comes in a box delivered right to your door and you get 100 nights to try it out. Skip that trip to the big box mattress store and get a mattress from Novilla. Throw out that cheap Walmart mattress you got in college and get yourself a mattress made by Novilla. Using promo code SHWEEZY or the link in our description, you can save 10% on any purchase through Novilla directly. Try out the mattress that your mom tried out last night. Again, that's 10% off using promo code SHWEEZY. And a reminder, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Hello, and what is going on, my fellow Schwoke Lords? What is up? Welcome to yet another episode of Cancel Sweezy, the Lord's trademark favorite podcast. What is going on, everyone? How's, how's it going today? I think I'm talking different today. I feel like I'm talking more radio voice today, uh, which isn't the worst thing in the world. That's radio voice <coughs> podcast came from the radio, so... Therefore, it would make sense that radio voices do come. I do get some people who are like, yeah, you, you do have such a radio voice. And I'm like, pretty sure it's just like, it's not natural. I've just listened to myself on a microphone talking for so, for just almost 100 episodes, 98 episodes, and then before that, other episodes of other shows. And uh, yeah, so that, that really gets you onto the platform of knowing how to talk uh, and make it sound good for the rest of the world. What is up, folks? What, how's it going? Uh, Cancel Sweezy is the show you clicked on today. You clicked on my dumb fucking face. Along with the X over it. Uh, I guess if you're listening, if you're watching, it's just my dumb face over episode 98. So, uh, you, you, you chose that. Congratulations. You played yourself. And, uh, there's nothing you can do about it at this point. Um, Cancel Sweezy, the only podcast that realized God made me fat and depressed because he knew that if I was okay, I'd be too powerful and I would kill him. So, uh, that's the that's the little tagline for this episode, folks. My hair is getting looking way too bad. I need I need a haircut, uh, which I think I'm getting on Wednesday. And this episode comes out, so I'll be getting a haircut. Uh, so last time you see me with this hair for well, this I mean this little how long my sides are and everything. Well, I don't I haven't got a haircut since like August. Okay, I mean COVID has just made me so lazy with my haircuts. I used to just. It used to be so good getting haircuts once a month. And podcasts then I was doing, uh, it was just audio. So there was no need for my hair to be that nice. Uh, just to flex. Uh, on anyway. But now I'm on camera every week, and I'm like, yeah, I probably won't get a haircut every month. You know, I'll just get it when I'm like, oh, I hate this. Whatever. Then I went like way too much. I did go a long period earlier this year. Now people are looking at those TikToks, and it's like, ugh. Uh, anyways, though, yeah, too, if I, if I wasn't fat and depressed, be too powerful and I'd kill God. That, yep, yeah, this is, yeah. This is the type of guy you get. So, yeah. Uh, go check out my music. I do have an announcement coming up very soon under Sweezy, so be cool to your school. Uh, and go check that out. Follow me on Apple Music, titled Deezer, Instagram, well, not, not Instagram music, uh, Amazon, Facebook, YouTube, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about today, folks. Uh, go check me out there. It's just Sweezy, it's music. You like music, don't you? You definitely. I think I, I get to announce it somewhat soon. So definitely want to hang around for that. Um, and uh, don't be stingy uh, there. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. Uh, social media under at the Shweezy. That's where you find me. It's like cancel Shweezy instead of cancel. It's the Shweezy. And it's all one word. So you were like, I don't know how to spell it. I'm like, look at the fucking name of the show. Uh, <laughs> you Congratulations, you played yourself. Uh, yeah, go check that out. Yeah, social media, that's that's cool too. Uh, Twitch.tv slash the Shweezy. Uh, I stream video games every Thursday over on Twitch. I'm going to finish my Pokemon Black randomizer. Uh, I think I'm at the I'm at the tail end of that. 
It's going to be cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so you're definitely going to check that out. Um, I think that. And then after that, I don't know what I'm going to do. And some kids come into my chat every once in a while. They want me to play games with them. Uh, and I'm like, I want to play this. I want to play Pokemon right now. So I can't, I can't necessarily do that. If you want to play Pokemon, play Pokemon Unite. I'm like, I have not picked up Pokemon Unite in a very long time. Uh, so that's cool. Go check it out there. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can connect it to your Twitch account. Uh, you get one free Twitch subscribe a month. Uh, so following anyone on Twitch is free. But to subscribe to someone, that typically is a $5 thing. However, you have Amazon Prime, connect the two, and voila, you can financially support me, give me some money, take money away from Jeff Bezos, and uh, it's really cool. So definitely, uh, definitely you want to go check that out, be cool to your school, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, be cool to your school, don't be, don't be stingy. Come on, Mark, don't be stingy. Uh, if you want to financially also support us, uh, we have our Patreon page where you can uh, leave us. It's mainly a tip jar right now, so you can always just leave us a tip. Uh, and uh, uh, so we could say thank you. Thank you for being a friend and travel down this road back again because your heart is true and you're a pal and a confidant. But let's not forget there's always the free shit you can do. Uh, free shit like if you are listening to this podcast versus watching us on YouTube. Make sure you do ch go check out our YouTube page. Uh, we do post the full episodes where you're probably going to be listening to us while you're driving or at work. Where you don't necessarily have access to be, you know, seeing a video, you know, you know stuff like that. However, you also uh, can, we post our highlights every week and uh, typically go over a very specific topic. Sometimes... Uh, that way you can leave us comments and give us your thoughts, because I always like to hear what people think, uh, especially if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm rarely wrong. Uh, people people know me for always being right, you know. When I saw a character named Josh on She-Hulk, I knew for a fact that guy was a bad guy. I just I called it immediately that Josh was bad. And, uh, you know... This is the type of guy you get. Uh, so don't, don't get mad about that. Uh, so do that, but make sure on the YouTube, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. Uh, liking our episodes, liking the videos you like, leaving us comments, we know what you're talking about. And if you're on the audio-only platforms, uh, make sure you give us a 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1 star review. Write us down something, tell me, tell me something good, or tell me something bad. You know, you know, it's, it's the right thing to do, you know? Man proposes and God disposes. There you go, so make sure you all go check that shit out. Uh, it's time for Previous Week Right Now. What is Previous Week Right Now? Previous Week Right Now uh, is everything that we do in our society. You know, we live in a society. And everything in our society is here to tell you that uh, what we're doing. Uh, that's what living in a society is and stuff like that. So that's that's special. That's awesome. That's special. Uh you know, uh, man proposes and God disposes that again. Yeah. So we just want to go over the news. I'm going to go over the news the previous week, uh, talk about some things, talk about some sad things and then try to end on a good note. We always try to end these on a good note. So let's end it on a good note. Let's, let's be cool. Let's do it right. Let's end it. Let's do this right. So, uh, uh, as Phil DeFranco would say, let's just jump into it. So, uh, this is from bold, uh, the website. Uh, not a lot of these are going to be from good sources. I'm going to tell you that right now. Just don't, just don't. Don't be stingy. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. Uh, do I have... I identify as a fucking threat. That's what I want you to hear. Uh, from Bold. Uh, city forced to remove Karen-themed Halloween display after complaints. Uh, That's rough, buddy. Uh, the city of Prosser, Washington, has been forced to remove a Karen-themed Halloween display after receiving complaints from residents. In a hilarious, ironic move, the official entry into the town's annual decoration competition was removed thanks to, well, Karen's being offended. City officials ordered the display to be removed on October 17th. Sad news, really, as the scarecrow was donned a... <coughs> Can I speak to the manager? T-shirt showed a great sense of humor. In fact, talking to the manager is exactly what residents in the town decided to do. A real-life Karen claimed the display was based on her likeness. Uh, Mauricia... Marcella Sanchez told NBC Right Now that the Scarecrow was clearly a personal attack. This past weekend, City Hall entered an annual Halloween decorating contest with a ghoulish Scarecrow dressed up to look like me, she said. Prosser City Hall engaged in target public harassment of a private Prosser citizen on public grounds. They created a grotesque F 
effigy to publicly humiliate a res city resident as retaliation for opposing a city bond proposal on the upcoming ballot. The display was removed immediately, and city administrator Thomas Glover had to issue an apology. This was in no way intended to be a political statement, a likeness to any individual or community group, he said. We have investigated the issue internally and found that no one who participated in creating the entry intended any malice. These actions were regrettable but unintentional. Uh, funny enough, the display was made by City Hall. You know, you have to wonder if they didn't make it because they deal with Karen and their extreme demands on a daily basis. Either way, the Karens win it again. The display is gone. Boo! I don't know. Um, so, this, this, you know, the irony. The... The the irony in uh, the irony in all this uh, that a Karen was offended by the Karen Halloween display. It was like I'm going as a Karen. It's a costume. It's funny. Uh, then an actual Karen gets offended, and like her name isn't even Karen. Uh, uh, it's a it's a I want to say a Mexican. Is Sanchez a Mexican name? It sounds like a Mexican. All right. It's a Spanish name. We can we know it's a Spanish name, so it's definitely a Spanish name. Um, so it wore. I don't know what this chick looks like, and I, I you know I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not, I don't feel in the mood to actually go ahead and Google what this bitch looks like. I'm just you know, uh, you know. this is the type of guy you get. So, uh, but I have to imagine. Okay, so the scarecrow is wearing a shirt that says, "May I speak to your manager." So this bitch who who thinks this scarecrow is mocking her she knows she likes to talk to the man she 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 fully intends to to idealize she idealizes as a Karen and so like when she hears like shut up Karen she's like oh, I'm offended cuz I am a Karen uh which is not good and I feel like sometimes these people uh you know because these people will get violent. So, like, you know, try to get them a little riled up. Try to see what happens. Uh, and if it's a woman, she, if she doesn't have a gun, like, one man is going to be able to take her down. I guarantee I'm like, I, I, I guarantee Marcella Sanchez is probably not a, like, a heavyweight wrestler or whatever. Uh, I just like how she, like, they made a Karen. And they're like, it looks like me. I'm like, does it look like you? Or do you have the Karen look? And, you know, you can have the Karen look, but most women nowadays are like, I'm not going to get that haircut uh, because people will call me a Karen, you know. It's kind of like how uh, people don't get perms because uh, men, don't, a lot of people don't get perms because uh, it looks stupid. And people don't want to be like, hey, that guy's stupid. So there, there isn't like, I like how they're like, oh, fine. I like how they're like, you know, it does kind of look like her, so we'll take it down. Anyways, you know, a lot of, a lot of cool stuff in this town. Uh, I wonder, I wonder, yeah, I wonder how, like, that's the problem. Like, if you watch Parks and Rec, like, you see those people who are like, there was a, there was a sign on the water fountain that said, uh, toxic water, uh, do not drink, and so I made tea with it, and now I'm sick. You're like... Like, those people, like, they're not, you know, they're making a joke, but those people exist. And, like, that's what these people have to deal with. And that's one, that's what Marcella Sanchez, that's who she is. She's, she's a bitch. She's a fucking bitch. Daddy. I don't know why I pressed that. Uh, okay, time for, time for, time for one of the show's main segments. We're almost 100 episodes in, and we've been keeping track, doing this since... I will actually, I think maybe day one. I think day one we started doing this. Uh, it's our segment called... Cool Stuff, Slick Stuff, Neat Stuff. Cool Stuff, Slick Stuff, Neat Stuff. Uh, the segment where we where we just go over what's new in the world of Garth Brooks. So, uh, what, a, what a fucking psycho. I like that. Uh, here we go. This is from Yahoo Life. Garth Brooks reveals sentimental meaning behind his first tattoo. What? I'm going to fucking learn how I'm fucking going to press these buttons. Uh, the country singer fulfilled a promise to his youngest daughter by getting the tattoo. Garth Brooks made, a, made good on a promise to get his first tattoo, and there's a very special meaning behind it. Earlier this year, the country singer revealed that he promised his daughter, Allie, that he would get a tattoo. I owe my baby a tattoo. I owe my youngest a tattoo. And I've got to figure out what it's going to be. But it's got to be done this year, 2022. 
he explained in a January episode of Inside Studio G on Facebook Live. In his most recent episode of Inside Studio G, uh, which was posted live on Monday evening, Brooks announced that the tattoo honored the most important women in his life, his wife, Trisha Yearwood, his late mother, Colleen Carroll, and his three daughters, Allie, Taylor, and August. And while he was yet to show off his ink, he revealed there's actually multiple tattoos. It's all about them being on my shoulder and around my heart and by my side. Oh, I didn't read that right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. It's all about them being on my shoulder and around my heart and by my side. He explained during the Facebook Live series, I know my three daughters have my back and by my side until I'm in the grave. But something about having them inked on your skin right here by your side and the rest of your life. Pretty freaking cool. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. I mean, this isn't, like, funny news. Like, this isn't funny. I was just... I think it's just funny, like, someone... Yahoo was like, what, what's going on in this world? What's, what's going on in entertainment? Garth Brooks mentioned he's getting a tattoo. I'm like, I'm excited to see this tattoo. The, the reason I'm excited to see this tattoo... Uh, one, one of the main reasons I know I'm excited to see this tattoo is because he's going to have to get shirtless if he's ever going to show it to anyone. From what it sounds like, he's going to have to take his shirt off. He's going to have the same body I do. Uh, and he's going to be showing us that body. You know, if you watch uh, The Road I'm On uh, on Netflix right now, it's next to the Ted Bundy tapes and uh, the new Dahmer series, uh, The Road I'm On by Garth Brooks. Uh, you know, he sat in the chair backwards, and that was a good thing because it, it would hide your gut. Why do you think when I film, hey, my camera is definitely not anywhere near my gut? <coughs> so for sure, like it's definitely nowhere, definitely nowhere near my gut. Uh, and then I get judged on by how fat I am, by uh, how big my fucking cheeks are. They look pretty slim right now. I haven't, I've lost nine pounds. I'm not meaning to brag. I have lost nine pounds. Um, okay, second reason I am enthralled about hearing Garth Brooks uh, getting a tattoo is because I believe it was Jeffrey Dahmer who said that uh, uh, people don't taste good if they've had... People with tattoos don't taste as good as people without tattoos. Uh, and, uh, you know, I never would have thought about that, which I guess. But it means, like, you're only... It's mean, I guess it could be, like, the skin. Like, but do people eat, the like, human skin? Is that a... I don't, I don't know. I don't know if people eat human skin. Don't ask me that. Don't ask me why people people eat human skin. Uh, that's weird. But if you have a tattoo, does it? Is it just the skin that tastes bad? Or is it the whole body? Someone let me know. <laughs> let me know, please. Um, anyways, uh, oh yeah, that's the that's the second reason why. Uh, because yeah, I think uh, is Garth because Garth. No because, you know, if karma, karma's a bitch, I think he would probably say, uh, is karma going to come back to haunt him? And uh, is he going to be eaten by someone? Is someone going to eat G? Someone going to eat G? He's worried about someone eating G? He's like, I've eaten some bodies before. And I'm telling you, there's only one race, and that's mankind. And all humans taste the same. So it doesn't matter the race. And that's a fact. Okay? Uh, roll Tide, brother. <laughs> roll Tide. I'm from Oklahoma, brother. Uh... Anyways, though, I've heard uh, Allie, I believe, I think Allie, yeah, she has a, she's a solo artist. She's the only one who does music, and uh, it's Allie, it's not like her middle name or something like that. She's definitely, she's definitely doing, I feel like if your parents are a good musician, like, I feel like uh, she's doing the, the smart thing, uh, and uh, she's uh, doing, like, she's making sure she's not, no one really knows she's, Gar like, I'm Garth Brooks' daughter. Uh, listen to my music. Uh, some, uh, what was it? Hank Williams, so it was Hank Williams Jr.'s, not Hank Williams, it was Hank Williams' granddaughter, Hank Williams Jr.'s daughter, uh, played her first show, and I was at this show, at the Grand Robbie. This is your first show. Now, most of us in the music industry, uh, most of the, us normies, uh, I would never consider myself a normie, but normal musicians, they may start out playing at church, uh, you know, and like talent shows, uh, you know, other open mic nights that allow kids in. You know, that's where they start. Uh, they don't start out at the fucking Grand Ole Opry. She was terrible, also. Uh, given that uh, no one is good playing their first show, that's a fact. No one is good playing their sh first show. 
Uh, but she was fucking off of Thank God the Grand Blue was like, play two songs, two, three songs, and get the fuck off the stage. We don't want to see you anymore. Uh, so that's cool. So, anyways, though, uh, anyways, though, well, that's cool. Cool. Cool things, Garth. And I really like that. Oh, all right. What's going on here? Oh, okay. USA Today is bringing us this. Uh, police investigating after private photos of Wisconsin volleyball players shared online. Uh, the University of Wisconsin women's volleyball team and athletic department are seeking answers after private photos and videos of players were shared on the internet. A statement released by the athletic department didn't offer details about the photo and video, but the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel received a photo from a person who said it was from one of the images in question. It happened to be have taken the, after the team clinched the best 10 Big Ten title last November in the photo. Some members can be seen posing with their sports bras lifted. According to Wisconsin, the picture and video were not intended to be made public. UWPD is not, inve- not investigating the volleyball students' athletes for wrongdoing in this matter. The statement said, Our top priority is supporting our student athletes and we are providing them with the appropriate services and resources. According to Wisconsin, members of the team contacted the university police. Upon learning that the images were circulating, the athletic department statement said, The police are investigating multiple crimes, including sharing sensitive photos without consent. The unauthorized sharing is a significant and wrongful invasion, invasion of the student athletes' privacy, including potential violation of the university policy in criminal statutes. The statement read, most of the content had been removed from the website where it was posted without the player's consent. Under coach Kelly Sheffield, Wisconsin's volleyball team had drawn headlines for its play, a national powerhouse in arguably the athletic department's most successful program. The Badgers have played in the flash three fi- final four and fours and reached the final three times in the last decade. The team is 13-3 with a 7-1 record in the Big Ten and is ranked number five in the nation. The next match is 7 p.m. Friday at H again Against Michigan at home. Okay. Um, also, um, let's see here. Let me gather. Let me gather my thoughts here. Um, I've seen them. I've seen the picture. I'm telling you. Um, and see, here's the thing. It, it's just, it's just titties, folks. It's, it's all it is. We're like, what does it look like? I'm look. Some of you like are listening. This like, I'm googling this right fucking now. I'm like, that's what I did when I heard the news. Uh, anyways, though, it's just like celebrate and they just like lifted their shirts off and their boobs are hanging out I'm like and, and you know you can't tell me it's like hey there's a picture of girls with t- like athletic girls with titties i'm like i want to see that and you know they're they're great looking women you know they're good looking women and they have nice tits i'm just gonna say it, it looks nice and everyone's like we should shame these women for even taking this picture to begin with shut the fuck up it's just for fun you know that shit's fun, you know. I, the and I like what the University of uh, Michigan, Michigan, University of Wisconsin is doing in this situation, where they're like, we're not doing anything to the girls. They didn't do anything wrong. They're just having fun, you know. Uh, taking naked pictures. They're adults. Taking naked pictures. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you want to send those to me, you can hit me up on Instagram. I would love to see them. Uh, but. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Kind of shitty to be leaking this shit, you know? And they're like, well, a lot of girls, they they took the picture. They clearly wanted people to see it. Like, shut the fuck up. No, they don't. There's a picture of me in suspenders that I didn't want to be put on the internet, but I put it on the internet myself because I'm, I'm just a fucking wild card. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Um, so yeah. So here's the thing, fellas. This is just for anyone. Anyone who gets pictures of boobs sent their way. Uh, And these pictures of boobs probably weren't, aren't meant to be. Just because someone sends you a picture of their tits doesn't mean you should be posting them on the internet, okay? That's bad. I I really don't like that. Uh, And uh, if you try that shit. I identify as a fucking threat. I do, so jot that down. And, uh, you know, yeah, no, it, it makes sense. Like, it's okay for them to take the picture. It's just fucking women, and they're like, "Yeah, look at our photo. It's fun. Look at our perky." Well, you know, they're fifty years from now. They come back for reunion, and they're just like, "Remember when our tits didn't sag? What a good time! What a good time that was!" You know, and then yeah, you, know, you know, it's like the fact. The fact is, it's okay to take pictures of your tits. It's okay to send it to someone. Uh, you know, specifically me. It's okay to send them to me. Now it's not okay. To be sharing those with people they weren't intended to be shared with. Okay, that's 
let's remember that. Let's remember that for the rest of our lives. Don't be saying that. But also, I hate to say it. If you if you want to see it, just Google. It's Wisconsin volleyball team. Like you know what to Google. You know what to Google. Don't be asking me to send you links to that shit. Okay. All right, our last article of the day. We're just going to end on a positive note. Uh, Feline looks dignified as she is sworn in as mayor of Italian town. Uh, this is from Ananova. A cat has been appointed the mayor of an Italian town and will remain in office for a year. Black and white Moggy Meow. Uh, I mean, a lot of Italian words, folks. Spent her first day in office as mayor of the animals of Civita de Antino Abruzzo region, southern Italy, yesterday, uh, 12th of October. Savita de Anton Antino, uh, Deputy Mayor Matteo Di Fabio, swore Miao into her role by placing an Italian tricolor ribbon around her neck and seen in these stately looking snaps. Miao will remain in office for a year before a new mayor of the animal is appointed. There are question marks regarding whether Miao's, uh, me I just fucking. Congratulations, you played yourself. The cat's name is Miao. Folks, the cat's name is Meow. Uh, first mayor was rigged as she reported. Okay, there are question marks regarding whether Meow's appointment uh, to the position of the mayor was rigged as she is reportedly to the pet cat of Dio Fabio's young daughter. The local media reported that she has long been the mascot of the town, which is home to some 900 residents. Uh, surprisingly, Meow is not the first feline mayor in Italy. Uh, Gervellona Lomelia Lina, the Bardi region, northern Italy, has had a feline mayor tradition dating back to 2005. Its first Moggy mayor, Cicchetti, uh, remained in office until it succumbed to feline leukemia. Why am I laughing at feline leukemia? Okay. Ha! <laughs> feline leukemia! <laughs> it was succeeded by Pippi. Pip. Pippi. <laughs> who carried out the role until 2013 in its current mayor, Marina, who was even taking part in civil marriage proceedings. Um, that was a whirlwind. Took me way too long to figure out the cat's name is Meow. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to tell you uh, the way this is spelled. Uh, M-I-A-O. Meow. Did I say Meow? I don't, I'm not going back and looking at this. Me <laughs> cat's name is Meow. But it's M I A O. Is that is that Italian? Is that cat speaking Italian? Is that me? Yeah, is that how you uh, speak to cats in France? Oh, no, not in France, fucking Italy. Italian. Italian cat. Meow. <laughs> oh, 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 oh man, that, that's a weird one. I love positive messages because. And also, is there two cats in this family? I've always noticed though, and you, we all know this, that when it comes to like. Families that have two cats in the household, one cat is just like an old man. Like, ah, let me outside. I'm going to kill the neighborhood cats and show my dominance. The other one's just a fucking crackhead. I have a friend who has one, and he hates his cats. And he's just, I guess he's just waiting to them to get good owners <coughs> and shit. Um, and, like, one is just fucking, will just fucking jump on your guy and, like, go straight to your hand because it wants its head pet. And then you're, like, not doing anymore. She'll be like, eh, eh, all, all, like patting her hand on her chest, and then eventually she'll bite your face for it. And really, hey, stop that shit. Uh, and uh, yeah, the other one's just an old man. So, anyways, the, I don't know what kind of cat meow is. Fucking the cat's name is meow. How did it take me that long? Huh. What? To figure that shit out. Anyways, um, yeah, the ideal place to live in Italy, maybe. Uh. Was it mystery? I don't think so. Coincidence? Maybe. Hotel Trivago. Have you ever been out in public and thought, hey, look at that fat guy, only for it to turn out to be a mirror and you are in fact the fat guy? That was the moment that kickstarted me into becoming the greatest health expert the world has ever seen. But I wasn't born being built different. Like Joe Cocker before me, I get by with a little help from my friends. And my friends happen to be today's sponsor, FNX Fitness. 
Evanex Fitness is committed to creating innovative supplements of the highest quality that provide focus for a productive morning, energy to thrive all day, performance supplements for to reach new goals, unique sleep and recovery formulas to support any sport, and healthy supplements to support an active lifestyle for years to come. I also really enjoy their clothing line that makes you look good while you work out as well. Another thing I love about FNX Fitness is that with every purchase, they donate a gallon of water to a child in need. Start working out smarter, not harder, by using the link in our description today you can save 15% on your purchase. Go save 15% on some of the best supplements out there when using the link in our description. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. When you're at the beach, you aren't going there naked, letting everyone see your little shrunken pee pee from being in the water. No, you're wearing some sort of clothing to cover up your privates. So why would you let companies you buy products from have access to the privates of your credit cards? That's where today's sponsor privacy comes becomes the clothing for your credit card information. Privacy is the first payment product that keeps your personal information private while being even more convenient than using a physical payment card online. Privacy empowers you to protect your physical card information. Each merchant you share your card information with puts you more at risk to hackers or data breaches. Why not use a privacy card instead? By creating a virtual card with privacy for each merchant you shop with, your physical card is safe and secure. Privacy cards can be paused or closed at any time preventing any future transactions from being authorized. Privacy cards can also be single use, meaning they close after just one authorized transaction. One of my favorite ways to use privacy is for a service with a free trial that requires you to put in a credit card to sign up. But wait, there's more. By using the link in our description, you can get $5 to spend anywhere. That's money you get to use. So start paying the smart way with privacy. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. This is the type of guy you get. So apparently, news flashed all of you out there. Christianity is on a decline in the, is it the U.S.? It's the U.S., yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, that's, that's what I'm talking about today on uh, Cancel Schweezy. The Christianity is declining in the United States of America. Uh, what apparently, you know, with our all our money says and God we trust, uh, we, with our, uh, our, apparently our, Founding fathers said it was a Christian nation, but then made it, uh, free, and then created freedom of religion. That's that's the, that's the type of guys we're getting. That's the type of guy you get. So that so yeah. Apparently, this is according to Pew Research Center, uh, and I guess the General Social Survey. I guess they were involved too. Uh, so Pew Research, I, I, from what I've heard, it's, it's very very good research. Very very done. It's just it's a lot of facts. So it's just a lot of facts and graphs and. Uh, and, and that shit. So, so I wanted to go over that <clears throat> and think about and talk about how what's going on. And I said, hey, what's going on? Why why are people leaving Christianity? Why is Christianity on decline? Well, you know what? Let's just jump into it. That's what I have to say. Let's just jump into it. Uh, let's see, in the early 90s, about 90% of the people in the United States identified as Christians. The report said 2020 Christians accounted for about 64% of the U.S. population, including children. Meanwhile, those who are not affiliated with religion has grown from 16% in 2007 to 30% in 2020. That's a pretty big jump. I would expect it to be a little bit bigger considering the time frame. Uh, all other religions, including Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, accounted for about 6% in 2020. Okay. Oh yeah, 2020 is when we had the. It's when we had the. Uh, what, what the fuck was it? Uh, census. That's what it's called. It's called a census, folks. Uh, learn, learn math, or whatever. So, what's the? What am I looking at here? I found a giraffe. That's that's frozen. You know, I'm looking at. I'm gonna look at a graph. Um, okay, let me. I'll. I'll pull up the graph here. Um, what is it saying? It's gonna take me to another link. Don't take me to another link. Tell, show me the photo. Show me the photo. Uh, so steady switching movements into and out of Christianity remaining stable at recent observational rates. Um, from yeah, it's going Christians to unaffiliated. So yeah, it's showing that the uh, compared to other religions, it looks like. Oh, this is like a prediction that, like, yeah, it's Christianity looks like it's going towards sixty-four percent to forty-six percent, which uh, 
Uh, That's rough, buddy. Uh, what was it? And then uh, rising disaffiliation with limits. Uh, need to general growing shares of Christians switch out before they turn 30. Drinking shares of nuns switch in. Okay, so then it's showing, yeah, more people have decided that uh, to leave Christianity rather than, than like, people who were not Christian-affiliated joining in, which is a big... Which, which you know, which I think says a lot about uh, that because... To be honest with you, because it's always like Christianity has always been like the recruitment religion. In, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, I guess they could fall under the same bracket, though I don't know. Those are like for sure cults. Like, you can go to a church and it's not a cult. Like, you can go to any church in the United States and I bet there's a chance it's probably not a cult. And then there's some that are just very culty. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, Rising disfa- disaffiliation without limits in each new generation, a growing share of Christians switch out before they turn 30, while a shrinking share of nuns switch in. That feels like the same graph, but I don't know what the difference is. I'm not smart. I'm not that smart. No switching. This scenario imagines no person in America has changed or will change their religion after 2020. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's more predictable. A lot of these are predictions. I don't know what's going on. All right, I just looked at predictions. It looks like people are going to leave. And not an amount of new people are going to stay. So, uh, you know, as, as Zuko, Prince uh, King Zuko of the Fire Nation once said, That's rough, buddy. Um, for a potential a stable rate of people moving in and out. Uh, so, yeah, what does this mean? It, basically, it shows that people are leaving Christianity and not people are replacing it. I guess I've already gone over that a little bit, but... Will this tell us why? Uh, uh, there, there's a reason I will think coming to abrupt stop. Uh, so yeah, that's this. So this is mainly just the research that's done, peer research that I've gone over this very poorly. But basically, what they're what they're describing is that as the future continues, and we're looking at the trends that pe- Christianity people are leaving Christianity. Before they're thirty, so people you, so people who grew up Christian, are leaving that shit. I'm an example. I have hundreds of friends who are also an example of that. Uh, but the thing is, because you think like there's some people going out, but then there's a lot of people coming in. You know, you think there's gonna be that coming in aspect. Uh, the thing is, I think what it's showing here is like I think it's the. The really cool thing, I don't think it's that big of a surprise that people are leaving Christianity. I think it's a surprise that their recruitment efforts are not doing very good. The fact that they're uh, they're recruiting, trying to get people to go to church and become Christians, all that stuff is not doing very good. Uh, and it's really bringing, it's really bringing the whole thing down. So, uh, And I, I, I happen to think, they say what age range... Uh, this is mainly affecting because I know they go under thirty, and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, and to be honest with you, you know, the kids I see on the talk, uh, they don't seem to have any affiliation with Christianity whatsoever. And if they did, it's always it's not not good. It's not it's not good. They have some stories to tell. Uh, you, uh, there was there was one point you know I was looking for the Christian talks to send friends and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it just looks like Christianity's going downhill. And so let's, let's think here. Why is, why is Christianity going downhill? And, you know, I, I want to go the, the Christianity as an organization over just specific religious beliefs, because I, I thoroughly, I mean, with religious beliefs, I feel like the big thing I would say in regards to religious beliefs when it comes to this uh, would be that uh, I feel like more and more people are reading the Bible. And I think the more and more people that read the Bible uh, realize and, you know, learn Jesus because I feel like, uh, you know, before Martin Luther decided to nail, you know, his 99, 91, 90, I don't know how many things he did. A lot of them repeat themselves. Let's be honest with you. If you've read that thing, a lot of it repeats it. He didn't need to make that many. Uh, he he kind of played himself there. Congratulations. You played yourself. Uh, cause he definitely did not need to make that many. He could probably sum it up pretty quick. Um, but yeah, that was, you know, around that time, people people were actually reading the Bible. They weren't just like 
trusting the words of one guy who knows how to read it and explain it to them. We were like, hey, that's wrong. I don't think that's correct. And then, you know, it kept moving on from there, you know. And we've just been escalating. More people have been learning how to read. And people are getting smarter. And then people have... And then I think the Internet probably has something to do with it. I don't think, I think people are really poking holes in a lot of things. We're seeing... We're really seeing the dark side, I think, of Christianity. Why people don't really want to be involved in it. Because, like, you see how... You read the Bible and you're like, Jesus helps the poor. Jesus helps the sick. Jesus, you know, Jesus wants to help people. And then uh, you see... And then you go to church and then the pastor's making six plus figures and they're like i don't know if we had the budget to be able to help people in our church uh but you can give us money i feel like we'd love you and they they probably preach more about giving money than they actually do any fucking thing jesus said and uh just to remind you uh jesus did say it's hard for rich people to get into heaven he he did say that his words not mine uh he he said that and that means, like, all these rich pastors who are using Christianity to become rich, and some to even become famous, they're going to have a hard time getting into heaven. That's, that's what he said. That's what, that's what he said. So I think that's, you know, that's, that brings it to light, just, like, how scummy pastors are. And then the Christian would be like, well, we're all not perfect. And I'm like, that's true. But I feel like they know better. They know better than to be like, you know, I'm going to take advantage of people who already don't have a lot of money, just to make myself richer. Like, you know, if you're going to get rich, and that's the thing, you know how to get rich. You're going to, you know, if you want to make an omelet, you got to break some eggs. That's what they said. Do you think Jeff Bezos has done the pure great thing to get rich? No. Do you think Elon Musk does? No. Didn't Elon Musk say, like, everyone has to go back to the office, and if you don't want to, you have to quit. And, like, that way he didn't have to fire people and pay unemployment. You know? That's what he did. You know, you think... You think those people are great people? Like, there are some rich people who do a good job, like Mark Cuban. He's just, but he's like, he's like fun rich, you know? You gotta be fun. I feel like Jesus doesn't care about the fun rich people. He's like, I bet if I ran Mark Cuban, hey, Mark, I'm kind of, I'm kind of low on money right now. Can I have a hundred dollars? He'd be like, yeah, fucking sure. I don't care. I, I use these to wipe my ass. Uh, so stuff like that. So that, you know, I think, you know, pastors and how churches are run. Churches are run just like an organization and mainly in most parts they become just, you go, it's like a Sunday, like, event where you listen to a shitty cover band, and then you listen to a TED Talk. That's what church is. People are like, you know, you can't, if you need, can't go to heaven if you don't go to church. I'm like, I, I feel like if I skip a couple TED Talks, Jesus is going to be cool. I don't think he's going to be mad. I, don't know, I feel like I don't sing along. And it's just like, how, and you just think about it, and you're like, no, I'm, you know, I'm playing in a band. We do, like, cover band weekends and stuff like that. Uh, weekends, you know, gigs and stuff like that. They're fun, you know, they're fun. We make money. And, the audacity I think it would have to have for us to put lyrics on a screen so people could sing along with us is anyone does anyone think how how fucking like narcissistic that has to be for a musician to be like I'm gonna put the words on the screen so everyone can sing along as if they don't know the songs already like if you're you know if you go to see a band live you should already you should know, I mean if you like them and you'll know the words if you don't you're not gonna sing along that's how fucking Church and the church brings us in, like we want people to sing along with us because it's fun. Like when you when you play with a when you play with a fun crowd and they all sing along, it's a lot of fun. Even if it's not your song, it's a lot of fun, and that's what churches try to do. And it's just you know I just know so many fucking church musicians who want to be fucking rock stars. And I'm like, yeah, have fun playing. Our God is greater. Our God is strong. I'm like that's that's rock star fucking material right there. Go cheat on your wife. That's, that's more rock star behavior than what you're fucking doing. Like, you're more rock star in your behavior than your fucking music. That, that's just fucking sad. And then we talk about all, like, the sexual assault that's going on in churches, too. And and the church will just cover it up because it's, a, you know, it's, like, basically turning into a corporation. And you're like, oh, uh, a past, oh, like one of the pastors sexually assaulted me. It's like, okay, uh, sign this waiver and we'll give you money so you shut up. Like, that's what Jesus wanted. Jesus wouldn't want people leading his good word to not sexually to sexually assault. That's what Jesus wants. He just wants people to sexually assault people all the time. And that's what Jesus said. Thou art now uh, stick your finger in a woman's vagina and hook it like a fish and carry her around. That's what I want you to do. And then have her sign a non-disclosure agreement and pay her off. That's what Jesus wanted. Uh, and, you know, I, and I think really the nail in the coffin for 
why Christianity is declining because I think a reason I kind of left going to church was mainly because of an orange guy uh, and how like every a lot there's a lot of people just you know I just really respected and they're like Trump is our savior he's he's the Messiah he's gonna lead America into a Christian nation again I'm like first of all you're describing kind of what the Antichrist is, like a false prophet, and he clearly is. You think he fucking believes in that shit? Do you think he believes in Christianity? I don't think he gives a shit about it. He gives a shit about the voters and wants people to vote for him, and so he's going to manipulate you, you dumb motherfuckers, to believe him. But, uh, yeah, keep telling yourself Trump is a Christian man. I got unfriended from a guy on Facebook because I, I like to get drunk and bully Republicans on the Internet, and I'm like, Admit right now that Donald Trump represents Jesus, and he unfriended me and didn't answer that question. So, yeah, so uh, I'm going to tell you right now, if, you're, if, you, if you identify as a Christian, you can't be a Republican. Uh, every, every fucking idea they have or ideal they have is 100% against what Jesus preached about. Like, 100%. Jesus would have probably been a socialist. Just, just going just gonna to leave that there. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Christianity going away and pe more people going away uh, will make society probably better because we're probably going to be better people regardless. We're not going to be better people just because uh, some, you know, some, because you listen to a TED talk on Sunday. Most of those people aren't very good people anyways. Let's just be honest with you. All right. Once again, we're going to scrape the bottom of the barrel, uh, go over some BuzzFeed content for you to see what, see what the fuck's going on at BuzzFeed. Uh, the, the one of the fucking worst companies, uh, to ever exist. Probably not as bad, but they're like, we don't hire white men. And I'm like, usually I'm like, all right, is this like something very specific for, uh, that like a black woman needs to do? No, we just don't like them. I'm like, you know, it's kind of as bad as like saying like, we don't hire black people. I and mean, it's kind of as bad. I mean, unless it, unless it's like the job, I mean, the job, you know. Anyways, though, yeah, uh, the article we're going over today, uh, people who were cheated on by their partners are sharing the most pathetic, terrible, and worst excuses they've heard, and I'm fuming, and I'm fuming. Don't fucking speak for me, BuzzFeed, okay? I di I'm not fuming at this. I'm not fuming. Shut the fuck up, BuzzFeed. All right, let's get into it. It was my birthday, and I really wanted to. Uh, oh, for cheating, it's like... It's my birthday. That's why I stuck my dick in her. <laughs> like, I really want... It was my birthday. How, how do you justify me? Like, you know, honey, please don't cheat on me. Unless it's your birthday and you want to. <laughs> Just fucking shitty fucking people. God damn. Uh, number two, I once overheard someone on the phone say he caught me cheating, but that serves him right for spying on me. I mean, so, like, if you're going to spy on someone, you got to be very secretive about it and only bring things up when it comes to a point where, uh, yeah, uh, someone's cheating. That's kind of the time, that's kind of the time you would bring it up. And he's like, that's what you get for spying on me. I'm like, well, and that's the thing, though, too. I just feel like if, in a relationship, like, if you have to spy on them and you don't trust them, there, there's, a, there's, there's a problem there. Like, you need to work on trust. That's a... That's a big problem in your relationship. Um, the lights were off. I couldn't see. I had other than this together. I actually know a guy who had a wife use this excuse. He literally caught her in the act with another guy, and he she said that she thought it was her husband the whole time. And guess what? They are still together. Um. Okay. Um. Here, here's. Here's my mental processes. It was dark. I didn't know it wasn't you. Um, the lights were off. I couldn't see. Why do you have another fucking guy over when your husband's gone? You know, how does that work? How does that work? He was just over, and I was like, I'm going to go to sleep. And then I thought you came in while he was still here. And, like, and, uh, and, so, and then I was like, well, he's here. Better suck his dick. People are fucking stupid. Uh, why am I reading these? 
after 21 years of marriage and two small children, my wife confessed to cheating, and her excuse was I performed a soul retrieval on him and discovered that he was my soulmate for the thousands of past lives and thousands of lives into the future. You can say the R word if someone says this to you. I would never let, I don't think you should say it any other time, but if someone says that to you, that is the perfect time to say the R word. Just a fact. Just, a, just, the, just one of the many facts of life. Uh, number five. I just got out of an eight-month relationship that ruined my life completely. The straw that broke the camel's back was her excuse for the time I was visiting my parents in another state. Her excuse for cheating was, I wanted to see if you loved me enough to stay after I did it. Okay, okay. Let's, uh, let's, let's talk here. Um, if you want to prove, want someone to prove their love to you, uh, cheating, cheating's not the good, because, you know, and when I grew up Christian, um, I, I, you know, I was generally with the divorce, you know, people got divorced, but, you know, I was always told that the, really, the only reason you should get a divorce is if someone cheated on you, that's the only time it's, like, justifiable to get a divorce, um, to be honest, um, Date someone longer, date someone for a while before you get married. That's that's also my advice. That that's the real that's real life advice. See if I loved you if I cheated. Um, if you'd still stay, I would have been like, guess what? I'm not. <laughs> guess what? You you you're you got an answer to that problem, and I'm not gonna stay because uh, you don't know how to keep your legs shut. I once heard from a former marriage counselor that there was a woman who claimed her husband was so affectionate, hardworking, and considerate, she developed an inferiority complex and dealt with it by cheating. Have we ever thought about putting down humans? Have we, have we thought about that? Have we thought about putting humans down? Have we? Have we? Have we considered it, putting humans down? Because I think this would be the perfect opportunity to do so. Okay, I just, I, you know, I think it's the perfect opportunity to put another human down is if someone's like, well, my husband's affectionate, hardworking, and considerate of everything I am. Uh, what a fucking pussy. I'm going to suck another dude's dick. Put that woman down. She doesn't ex deserve to exist. Where, where, is, where is Ted Bundy when we need him? Uh, when we need him in that situation. Uh, they said, I thought it was funny that you didn't know. Yep, that actually happened to me. Call her a bitch. She's a bitch. Uh, that's the... If, should you call women bitches? No. Uh, that woman's a bitch. And I feel like if you... Someone got offended, it's like, don't call women a bitch. Well, she said it was funny that I couldn't... Didn't figure out that she was cheating on me. Yeah, that's kind of a bitch. I mean, we all know that's a bitch. So, that's... That's... that's okay. Uh, kind of similar vein, my ex looked me square in the eye and said, I knew it would hurt you, but I didn't think it would hurt you this much. Well, what the fuck? You're like, you're just like, yeah, I sucked another dude's dick. What? You know, that really hurt me. Well, fucking pussy, I didn't think it hurt you that much. God damn. Some people are just fucking, like, soulless, you know? Oh, there's a meme there. Uh, number nine. I just have a flirty personality. Uh, she, she probably, she's probably bad at texting, too. Meaning, she's bad at monogamy. Uh, I have a flirty person... I know those women with flirty personalities. They're pretty bad at monogamy. They're really bad at monogamy. I'm polyamorous. That's a that's a long word for whore. But up up da I thought y'all were friends. That's an actual quote from my ex. My immediate response was, "How the fuck does that make it any better?" She had absolutely no reply. I just sat there with her jaw dropped. Your best friend. I thought I was okay. I slept with your best friend. Because you guys thought you guys were friends. I thought that was cool. I, I thought you guys shared everything. Yeah, like fucking video games, not fucking women. Women are women aren't objects, lady. That's funny. Oh, this could be this. They didn't say the gender. You know, like, like uh, let's, let's. I'll go with guy. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be talking a lot of shit on women uh, today. Uh, I'm a guy here. It's like, yeah, we share makeup. We don't share fucking. We don't. Sh sh we don't share who we put our whose dick we put in our mouth. There we go. Uh, I was looking for an excuse to break up. If you want to break up, why didn't you just break up? Yeah, just fucking break up. I mean, you're you're you. Okay, so 
you, you want to break up with someone, but you're having a hard time doing it. Therefore, you cheat on her. I mean, that's is a good idea how to get her to break up with you. But stop being a fucking pussy and just fucking man up and break up with her. It's not that... Actually, it is pretty hard. Uh, but if you don't like... If you don't like her that much, you're going to willing to cheat on her. I feel like if you're willing to cheat, cheating's harder than breaking up. So I'm, I guess... I don't know. Depends on your situation, I guess. You were too nice. I'm just... I'm doing you a favor. Stop, ladies. I'm just telling you right now. I know there's the nice guys. No, those guys exist. You know who they are. But, like, if you're dating a guy and he doesn't have that red flag and he's nice to you and your thought is... I just, I just, I don't know. He's just, he's just nice, too nice to me. Uh, go to therapy. That's called, it's called you have some sort of, like, weird approval thing going on here. Daddy, that's daddy issues right there. And you know what? It's 2022. We can't deal with this shit anymore, okay? Um, number 13. I thought about you the whole time. I never understood the excuse it makes it. That does make it worse. Because you know you're doing a bad thing. You know you're doing something wrong. And yet, you continue to do it. And you're thinking about her while you're doing it. If you're going to cheat on someone, everyone, don't think about your partner. Don't think about the person you're cheating on. Have your fun and then feel guilty. Don't do it at the same time. Guilt later. It's, it's called making it tomorrow's problem. That's what that's called. Make it tomorrow's problem, okay? Uh, 14, I'm an alpha, and that's what we do. That's not what fucking alphas do. Um, what alphas do is drink protein shakes and listen to Joe Rogan. That's what alphas do. Uh, they don't fucking cheat on, cheat on people. Uh, that's not cool uh, to do. Um, what, are you fucking, are you a lion? Or, or are you like, oh, so do you identify as a lion? Should we fucking get you a litter box for you? Uh, flashback story, I got a message from my mom about, I need your opinion on cats. I was like, well, don't know, nope, not a cat expert. And then she was like, well, there's a kid uh, at another school who says they identify as a cat and they want a litter box. I'm like, don't do any accommodations for them. Tell them, t send them to a psychiatrist or something like that. Uh, they're at that point. Like, you know, fun, you know, I'm a cat girl, but I mean, that's fun, but like, go to your regular job and take normal shits, okay? Um, uh, Oh, it meant nothing, and nothing compared to sex with you. Well, thanks, I guess. Well, you know. Um, meanless to say, nothing nothing compared to sex with you. What are you fucking like? Is this, there's a fucking wine tasting you're doing? You're just fucking, yeah, I'm going to stick my dick in a bunch of other women. And be like, you know, it didn't feel, you know, your vagina felt better. <laughs> like, that's like, well, there we go. <laughs> like, oh, it's like. Oh, well, in fact, well, I look at it this way. I mean, technically, our marriage is saved. So let's call it a toast. So pour the champagne, pour the champagne. Uh, number, okay, 16. Is she's your twin? Does it really count as cheating? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind here. Twins are two different people. They're not the same person. Some I met some twins who do are just like the same exact person. Like just in two different forms. They do everything together. Uh, they do that creepy stay in the back of the hall thing like they did in The Shining. Sometimes they do that. It's just weird. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it counts as cheating because it's a different person. Therefore, it counts as cheating. Uh, this one happened to a good friend of mine. I was with him just after this little gem was dropped on him, and it took him some time to recover. His ex said, I actually wasn't cheating on you. I was dating the other guy first, so I was actually cheating on him. Technically, she's right. Uh... Uh, to, to be honest with you, my friend, um, what was it, yeah. I mean, technically, she cheated on both, I mean, yeah, she technically cheated on both of you, but she was dating him first, so technically, cheating on him, so you're the mistress, start of the mister, that's weird, is it mister just like the, the male version of mistress, so technically you're the mistress, uh, I'll pretend, yeah, it was it was a chick, so, you know. 18, uh, you didn't answer your phone, so I had to do it. Uh, they sent that at 2 a.m. I called back four minutes later, and it was too late. Apparently, I bought a house two days prior for us to live in, and now I'm selling that house for $260,000 higher, and I paid for it six years ago. All I can do is laugh. Wow. Well, hope that other guy's dick was good, because you, that's a lot, that's a good amount of money. Um... 
I was going to tell you eventually, but I wanted to make sure that we had genuine connection. I was given the lo this line shortly after it went off the deep end for a while. She implied that in order to make sure her and her new boyfriend had a real connection, she had to go over to his place several times. Uh, now someone doesn't have morals. That's the thing. How many of y'all just didn't grow up with morals? I grew up with morals, and I'm just like, I feel like dating more than one person's kind of a thing. Like, now, like, if you're not official to anyone, and it's like, you know, there, there's that. That's the gray area. Uh, you gotta commit. You gotta ride or die, okay? Uh, it was the alcohol, not me. Um, no, it was you. Uh, uh, and if you're if alcohol, see, alcohol, uh, it brings something out of you. Uh, brings out, should bring out, bring out things in you. It, it brings something out of you. Uh, for me, it's like, I love you guys, and I just get belligerent sometimes. I just start talking my ass off. It just makes me, but I, but I usually come to, I love you guys. That's the kind of guy, uh, this is the type of guy you get in the soundboard's not on right now. Uh, some people get really angry and want to fucking fight you. That's a sign you need to quit drinking. Uh, if you're gonna cheat on your partner, it's another sign you should quit drinking. Uh, because you are ruining yourself. Uh, 21, I lost focus and had a consensual workplace relationship. And this is another <laughs> quoting Ned Fulmer from the Try Guys. <laughs> oh, man. And I like how so many people were like, I don't even know who the Try Guys are. I'm like, I knew who the Try Guys were. I knew who the Try Guys were. So I knew that. And then I'm like, you just cheat on him? Like, let's try polyamory. Uh, let's try cheating. Now, that's, that's a good one. Oh, uh, and BuzzFeed, they used to work for BuzzFeed, so that makes it even better. Uh, and finally, sorry, we just started the threesome without you. What? The threesome? See, I feel like... See, foursomes are still, like, twosomes, you know? But, like, we started the threesome without you, you're like... And I don't even know... I don't even know the, the details of that. Like, is it a devil's three-way? There were already two other guys, and like, and after that... After two guys, it's a gangbang, okay? I mean, actually, technically, five guys is a gangbang. Good fries, though. Good fries and burgers there. Um, but uh, we just started three some without you. Ah, oh, the dream is to get the belt, and this guy lost it. What if it was two chicks, and they just got some random guy to come in? That would fucking suck, dude. Uh, oh, I, I mean, I, like, no, we'd, we'd done. Like, we'd, if I saw her in public, I'd be like, you know, Please don't talk to me. Shit like that. Just do weird shit. Anyways, though, but, but that's what BuzzFeed's up to. Um, everyone tell me the worst line you got for being cheated on. Love to hear it. Love to hear. Love to hear your stories. Uh, love to hear uh, all the tomfoolery you've been up to in regards to that, yeah. Have you ever cracked open a cold one with the boys? The vibes are on, then all of a sudden, you are out of cold ones. Though the vibes are still on, the vibes will soon go off because you are out of cold ones. There's no need to drive when you're under the vibes. That's why today's sponsor, Drizzly, is here to make sure that the vibes continue. Drizzly gets all your favorite beer, seltzer, wine, whiskey, and much more delivered directly to your home. With their easy-to-use mobile app, we are getting one step closer to never leaving our homes. You know it's a saying something when it's being praised as the Amazon for liquor. Drizzly is my go-to app for getting all the booze I need so I can do other things. So using our link in the description today, you can save $5 off your first purchase through Drizzly. Drizzly has proprietary ID verification technology that it provides to its retail partners that allows drivers to scan IDs for more than a barcode to make sure the purchaser is over 21 years old in the U.S. and of legal drinking age in Canada. Retailers on Drizzly may have a minimum order or delivery fee. So using our link in the description, get $5 off your first order with Drizzly. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. You're not a boomer who still goes to what our ancient civilizations called a store. You buy everything on the internet like a modern individual. What if I could tell you that you could be saving more on your purchases by only making a few clicks on your computer? That's where today's sponsor, Honey, will change your life. Honey is a free browser extension you can download using the link in our description. 
of this episode. Honey searches the entire internet for promo code, coupon codes, free shipping, and anything else that will save you money when buying things online. It's 100% free, and at no point will you have to pay for it with all of those many, many microtransactions. It's as simple as pressing a single button, and you can start saving money. Not using Honey is basically throwing money away that could be saved for more important things. I recently had to get business cards uh, for myself, and Honey literally saved me 60% on like a pack of 500 business cards. It was amazing. Add the Honey extension to your browser today for free by using the link in our description of this episode. And when you support, uh, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Because apparently, all right. Apparently, it's time for Ask Shweezy, the part of the podcast where I just go ahead and I give you advice, advice on everything you need, anything you need to survive, to get going, to do the do, do yourself, do yourself. That's that's my lesson. Do yourself. Kind of like saying go fuck yourself, but uh, you know when you tell someone to go fuck themselves, you're basically telling them to go masturbate. You know, I, I will later. I don't want to do it here. Can't get it up here. Uh, anyways, though, let's uh, let's just jump into it. Let's get into it. Let's see what's going on here. All right, first question we got: Why can I orgasm fast when using my hand, but take like forty minutes during sex? Honestly, this weirds me out a lot, and I really need an answer. What? Okay, so I guess you would have what they, uh, uh, was it delayed ejaculation maybe? Um, and so basically when you're, when you're doing it manually yourself, you can, you can get it pretty fast. But, uh, then when, uh, you involve another person, um, it, it takes a while. So there, I mean, there's a lot of contributing factors. There, there could be a medical issue. Um, I would say maybe, uh, if you have, if you're, if you don't live in the United States, or if you do live in the United States, I'm sorry, but if you don't, you can always go uh, get your doctor checkup, do some lab testing, just see if something's off there. Uh, hopefully, if you can do that, sometimes that can be usually sometimes can tell you what's going on there. Um, and then there's a m- million of other different factors that can do it. Um, when you're jerking off by yourself, um, are you sober? And if you're with, you're having, if you're having sexual intercourse or coitus. Uh, are you, are you like a little drunk? Is it usually, usually happens when you're, uh, when you're with like, when you know, you're just, you know, one night stands and ho- random hookups and stuff like that. It takes you a while to get it going. Uh, so like, yeah, consider that, consider some of like the health factors. Cause like you smoke weed and you're drinking. So if those two are factors into that, like, is it, you think that could be a factor into it? Like you're it's different when you're doing it by hand. Uh, and then uh, there's also a very big psychological element to it as well, uh, which is not, which is very much not uncommon. Uh, apparently, uh, a lot of male porn stars, apparently they, some of them, you know, just because it's a psychological thing for them, they uh, they have to know a command. That's why. It's a fun thing, though. Uh, sometimes, what, next time you're watching porn, you uh, Think of a video where, like, the guy's like, all right, you're going to come now? And then they, they stop fucking, and he takes it out and starts jerking his dick, and you see, like, a cut in the video footage waiting for that pop shot. Is that what they call it in the industry? You know, I, know some, I know some terms. Uh, they call it, like, a pop shot. And so think of that. You know what's going on is, like, they're, they're getting themselves there manually because uh, sex is it's different for them with sex and stuff like that. That could be that. You know, uh, you never mentioned if you're in, like, a relationship or dating someone, uh, and you also didn't even mention your gender, so, oh, no, I see, no, that's 40 minutes, not 40 male, um, uh, so, I feel like you're a guy, um, I feel like women, well, I don't know, uh, I'm I'm just assuming you're a guy, you know, sometimes you just look at these questions, you're like, I assume, uh, you're a man, I just assume you're a man, answering these questions, and, uh, other times, you know, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, you know, I'll speak to you as if you're a man. Uh, figure out why you can you can do it fast with your hand and not with a woman. You know that's you know I always think about that. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's just uh, a lot of times. I think it's like a psychological thing. Uh, like maybe you're like really worried about nothing inside a chick, and so it's hard. Maybe maybe you need to work on your cardio. Maybe that could be a thing too. Um, different thing. Uh, maybe see how long it takes another person to get you off. Maybe 
try to get a blowjob sometime. Just be like, like okay, I'm trying to experiment because I've been having a hard time figuring out how to get myself off with another person. With myself, it's weird. And there'll be some girl who's like, I'll help you. you know, the, the cool ones. The cool ones will help you. So th- that's just, you know, just, just more ideas for you. But, yeah, overall, um, go to your doctor. See if there's anything uh, that's going on with your body. Uh, it doesn't sound like erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction, a lot of times, uh, really can be like a sign like, yeah, hey, something's going on with your body. Uh, do it completely sober, which I know is not fun. Okay? I know. I know. I know it's not fun. But uh, it ha- sometimes it has, to, it has to get done. Uh, and, and then for the most part, sometimes it's just psychological. Maybe get into a long-term relationship. <laughs> Maybe that's my answer for you. Just get into a long-term relationship and see what happens. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I like that. Okay. Am I an incel? All right. Let's see your explanation. Let's see what's going on. I lost my virginity when I was 17, but I've been on one date in the three years since then. The reason I'm not sure is I'm genuinely not trying. The one girl I just tried to try with went on a date with me and we kissed, but I didn't ask her on a second date. I just don't have the energy for it right now. Would you consider me an incel? So, uh, long answer short, no, you were not an incel. That does not make you an incel. Uh, see, it sounds like you're just not trying. That's what, and I, I'm going to be honest with you. That's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm not really trying, and because it, it, it's it, you know, one night stands are different. Like you know, it's like I wouldn't mind having a friends with benefits, but it's at the same time you're kind of like, I also don't want to try that either. So it's that. So the the fact that you're not trying makes you, uh, not so you got on one date in the last three years, and you're like. Not trying, like, have you been, uh, have you been consistent in, like, asking girls on dates and they declining you? Has that just been a lot of times? Uh, or it's just, like, you went on one date and you're like, yeah, I, I don't really care. I don't want to really try. It just sounds like, sounds like to me, for the most part, you're just not wanting to try. And, you know, I get it. Sometimes you just go through that. But wh- why would you think you're an incel? Because mm, incel is short for involuntarily celibate. It means you're not, you're or involuntarily celibate. Like, you're celibate. Uh, is it involuntarily celibate? Or, yeah, involunt- like, you want to have sex, but you, but you, the way you have lived your life, you're, you want to be celibate. It sounds like you can, you can get your uh, knob slobbed on uh, as much as you want, but it's, that, but incels, like, they can't get women. And the reason they can't get women is because their personalities are garbage. Doesn't sound like your personality is garbage. Uh, Sounds to me, if I'm going to make a guess, uh, with no prior knowledge, you said you lost your genuine 17, and you've been on one date in the last three years. I don't know how old you are right now. Uh, so, uh, could be a girl broke your heart. And sometimes when a girl breaks your heart, you just don't want to try. You don't want to try anymore. Uh, and it's very much, you know, guys will just like, you know, if one girl really breaks them, like, they'll wait, they'll not date anyone for a while until they meet someone right. It's just, it's just how it is. This is the type of guy you get. So, yeah, so it's not uncommon for that. Uh, and you didn't ask her on a second date, and, like, you you said you don't, yeah, you don't have the energy. I don't know how you would, I don't know how you would even, how it comes to your mind that you're an incel. I think, oh, I just think, oh, I can probably get it. You're in your mind, you're like, I don't really want to date anyone right now, you know. Or I maybe want to date someone, but I just don't want to try, you know. Uh, you want things to happen easy, you know. And, like, you hear some people are, like, talk about how hard you try dating. They're like, yeah, the way I met my wife was easy. We just met, and then we got, and then, we went on a couple dates, and I proposed. I'm like, okay. Sounds like you both tried, and, and that's nice. But now it's, a lot of, it's different for everyone. It's, I wish I had that one different. Anyways. What? Uh, so, yeah, I don't think anything you do screams insult to me. You don't talk about, like, I fucking hate women. Uh, women in their bodies. <laughs> and their bodies are so sexy, and I wish I could have sex with them, but they don't want to have sex with me. Because uh, they're fucking stupid, and they want, they want a guy who's an asshole and has... Prior, their priorities straight and uh, has goals in life and uh, don't don't jack off with Cheeto dust. Uh, this is the type of guy you get. <laughs> yeah, the, the, those are incels. Uh, watch an incel documentary, maybe. There's one out there. Uh, it's not funny. I'm just going to let you know that. I went into it thinking it would be funny. It was not It was really sad. You saw some guys in there that I'm like, their lives are sad. The, the one guy who started the whole incel movement, like, he was Max, he was, like, 20 to 23, and he's a virgin, 
He didn't look. He wasn't that ugly of a guy. He probably was just an asshole. And then, anyway, that's a long tangent. Anyways, though, it's safe to say you're not an incel. Uh, you're just uh, not interested in dating right now. It's probably what you are. So uh, keep your chin up, high, keep it high and tight, and uh, remember... Man proposes and God disposes. So... What do people that are against capitalism slash capitalists want? What exactly is it that they need that needs to be done better? What has to be changed? Is it, pra- is it practical? And where has it really worked? I've always heard people scream, fuck capitalism, but what and why and what is the right thing to do then? So, I don't, I, you know, I feel, you know, I don't like, ca- I don't like, I feel like I don't mind capitalism I don't like capitalists, um, and it's it's a different. There's, I mean, it sounds like I'm making a point, but it doesn't, because I generally think that uh, capitalism, for the most part, incentivizes like employers, you know, to take advantage of employees. I think that's 100 percent why, and I think people, uh, human beings who work sh- jobs they already don't like, they're just working there to make a living. They go there, they have a boss who's an asshole. And they tell them what to do, and they make their lives, and they make their jobs even harder for no reason, and they make it fun, and they have to work more and more. And you always hear about this. Go on TikTok. Watch any fucking slightly socialist videos. Like, oh, hey, we're going to give you a promotion. Like, awesome. Is that coming with a raise? No. It means you're going to get a lot of extra work and not the pay to do that. And I think the idea of capitalism, because if I have employees, the idea is I want to pay them as little as I possibly can and uh, get the most work out of them, which I think people are just trying to be tired of being exploited. And that's why people, I think, are different with capitalism. Because it's different, because I think, you know, the idea, I think people, for the most part, you know, everyone would probably wish they were rich, but, you know, that does take a lot of work to be rich. I think people just want to get paid properly for the work they do, and, and then, you know, that way, because... Everyone's like, money doesn't buy happiness. I'm like, that's a fucking lie. Money does buy happiness. And uh, for the fact is that money will easily, majority of people's problems in life, even like, I would say a lot of problems in my life come down to money, money and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, I'm a musician too. And so, like, I wish I could, I mean, I I hear about like, yeah, in the 80s, like, people could play uh, and people are getting paid the same amount, like, bands are getting paid the same amount, like, cover bands are getting paid the same amount of money as they did in the 80s as they are right now. And, like, you know, like, in most jobs would not pay you. Do not pay like that. Like, typically what people play, got in the 80s, like, working at McDonald's, is different from what it is today, even though, even though, you know, mainly because minimum wage has at least grown a little bit, at least up until 2009, and even then, McDonald's is like, oh, people can't really, people would probably want to make more than like seven twenty-five an hour. So we're going to start them offering like $10 an hour. And, you know, it's not, still not really a livable wage, but it's better than the actual minimum wage, you know, and stuff like that. And so it's really bad. And then, because people, like inflation, and I've always said inflation is not a real thing. And like, inflation is people want to make more money, so they raise their prices. That's all it is. That's all inflation is. It's just people, they're just raising the price and they're like, well, it costs us more now. No, it fucking doesn't. Everything's the same. Unless there's like, what, are we like running low on something in the world? Like, the only thing I know about is fucking oil. I'm like, are we running low? Yeah, we're running low on potatoes, so we're going to have to raise the prices there. I'm like, shut the fuck up. We are not running low on potatoes. This is a fucking Irish potato famine going on right now. Are we living through the Idaho potato famine? We have to raise the price of fries, fucking potatoes. I'm like, Five guys will give you five, like, 30 potatoes in one bag. And they expect us just to be like, yeah, there's a potato famine. We're going to raise them prices. Uh, it's, it's fuck it. So, basically, these capitalists are just people who want to get rich. And so their idea is to get people to get them, make them more money while they struggle and start to death. People just want to be done being exploited. I think that's the main point. I don't think people would hate capitalism so much if it didn't incentivize employers taking advantage of employees. I don't feel like that, that's the main concern when it comes to that. And I think we fix that issue, which I don't, I don't know the actual answer to that. So um, someone's going to be like, well, what's your answer then? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm a musician yelling into a microphone right now. You need to, fig- you need to figure out your own priorities. 
Is it fine? Is it fine to use the same towel twice in a row after wiping down the entire body with it, including private areas and bum, which are obviously clean? Like, is everything equally clean though, etc.? To use it twice, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and, and not necessarily. And that's probably why I put it on this list, you know, to, uh, to to say, uh, to talk about it. What? So here's so people here's here's a more general aspect of this so the idea is like and i've seen like women or it's usually just women who have this they have like one towels for my face and one's for my upper body and one's for my lower body and then guys will be like which one did i wipe my ass with and so and here's my mindset with that you should only need one towel and when you get into the shower you should be cleaning everything okay everything you can, to, to quote the late, great Kevin Samuels, uh, fellas, you need to wash your balls, and you need to wash your asshole. Scrub down there with your hand for about two minutes and just clean down there, okay? Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. Uh, and people are like, oh, I don't want to wipe my ass and wipe my face. Are you not cleaning your ass in the fucking shower? Do you think it's fucking gay, Josh Casey? He, he would not say gay, but, like, you know. He's like, it's gay to wipe your ass. It's gay to clean your ass. You don't want to do that. Uh, listen, you need to clean your asshole. And look, if a finger slips in there and you like it, it's okay. You know what? It's okay to be gay, too. I don't know why everyone's, like, upset about it. It's like, I'm scared I might be gay. I don't want to know that. I'm like, it's okay to be gay. Fuck dudes. I don't, I don't care. Fuck dudes. Just clean your asshole. So cleaning your, you have to clean yourself well. And in that regards, when cleaning yourself, uh, that means when you dry off with a towel, your whole body should be clean. So you should be able to go in any direction on your body and clean yourself without, without any worry about getting shit in your eyes. The shit should be out of your butthole anyways. Any fucking brownie stains that you have on your butthole should be gone. You should be... You, I believe if you're not... If you're worried about wiping your at like, you know, wiping your butt and then wiping your face after a shower. After a shower where the whole purpose is to clean yourself, you need to learn how to clean yourself better. It's like, you know, all these fucking chicks who send me texts all the time, they're like, hey, I'm hopping in the shower. I'm like, okay, uh, think you could help me? I'm like, is this your first shower or something? I'm like, I don't I'm not fucking figure it out, stupid. Jesus. Uh, anyways, though, uh, clean your whole body, and you shouldn't have to worry about anything you shouldn't have to worry about wiping your body down with a towel because your whole body should be clean. And that's not a problem you should be worried about. And uh, uh, if you have a problem... Uh, I identify as a fucking threat. So, yeah, which one's the chick who's like... Ooh. Let's go full throttle. Fucking feel like a woman, a real woman. Okay, okay. I thought I had the pretty bold of you little fucks to assume that I'm not God. Is it this one? Oh, no! <laughs> Our table! I fucking love that kid. Oh. Can a white guy cosplay Lincoln Osiris from the film Tropic Thunder? From the film Tropic Thunder. Okay, thank you. From the film Tropic Thunder. <laughs> Fucking quotations. Uh, portrayed by Kirk Lazarus, portrayed by Robert Downey Jr. in brown face. That it being frowned upon. So, I feel like... Somehow, uh, this, this comes up every year, around Halloween. <laughs> this specific subject... I, I always feel like an, one, at least one person every year uh, learns this lesson, and that's the they learn this lesson. Uh, I'm going to speak to all the, the white people out there. Uh, hey, white people. It's, it's your boy Shweezy here, giving you a message. Uh, blackface is bad. Don't do blackface. Uh, there's no situation where you could dress up like, uh, dress in blackface. Be like, what well, I wanted to dress like my favorite rapper. I'm like, no, don't, don't do the blackface, okay? Uh, do not do blackface, uh, because here's the thing. Uh, as history, uh, if I'm going to teach you a little history lesson. Uh, white people used to dress in blackface and pretend to be black people. And, uh, it, w it was very bad. It was very, very racist, uh... It was very cool. It was the Tom Crow era of history. You should, if you if you did not, if you had a bad, if you went to had history class in the South and we're like, you know, the Confederacy did win. We just didn't get, you know, the the, the office was stolen from us. You no, know, shut the fuck up. 
uh, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, they would mock black people. It was super racist and super bad. So when a person, when a white person does blackface today, even though, you know, even though they're like, I'm Samuel Jackson, I'm, I'm, I'm Nick Fury, um, it does not come across that way to anyone. Uh, why, why it's decided that every year, uh, a new white person has to discover that black, not doing blackface is bad and is a travesty, um, uh, to the human race. Uh, the fact that people can, people graduate high school and not know that is shocking to me. The fact that the Holocaust wasn't taught as well in high schools, like my high school taught Holocaust well, but apparently other schools just don't know what the fuck, uh, you know, it was a hoax, you know, it's the Jews made it up, yeah. Just a million, just a million Jewish immigrants coming to America with the fucking, fucking numbers brailed onto their body. Just, that's a fucking, it's a fucking hoax, they're all in on it. All the Jews, they showed up to their meeting, they're all in on it. Uh, and also, you're, the second part of your problem, I want to say, is, uh... The thing with a good Halloween costume, here's what has to happen. People have to recognize your costume uh, without you explaining to them. If you have to explain to someone what your costume is, uh, for the most part, like, you know, there's, you know, there's some costume. Like, if you dress up like Scott Pilgrim, it's, you're very clearly dressed up like Scott Pilgrim for Halloween. Like, that's like specific t-shirts, armbands, you know, you look a certain way. Someone may not have seen Scott Pilgrim in the world. That's okay, but a lot of people will be like, Scott Pilgrim! You know, it's better with a couple's costume if you have Ramona Flowers. Unless you just have a normal Asian chick. No costume. Knives chow. Uh, but yeah, um, no one's gonna think you're Kirk Lazarus, 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 slash Lincoln Osiris from Tropic Thunder. Uh, Tropic, they're not gonna guess that. They're just gonna think you're wearing blackface. That's all they're gonna think you're doing. Uh, so that's just a lesson for everyone today. Don't do blackface. It's bad. Okay. They just, just don't do blackface. How can I masturbate in college? What? Okay, I actually have some advice on this. So, uh, for those of you who don't know what college is, uh, explain it to me like I'm five. Uh, if you don't know what college is, uh, basically, you go to a boarding, it's basically a boarding school, but uh, you live in a dorm, uh, a cramped room, cinder blocks, usually made by cinder, cinder blocks, uh, not well ventilated, very bad. Not not a good living situation. You share this tiny... I've seen studio apartments bigger than these. Uh, these small, small room with someone else. And you just you just live in one a one room. It's, it's very weird. Uh, everyone in my college, they had to, like, force... They forced freshmen to live in the dorms. And the, unless they, like... I don't, know, I don't know what the rule was. And then, like, they forced sophomores the year after that to live in the dorms because they were losing money from it. Like, everyone in, everyone in my college tried to live off campus... Uh, in, like, off-campus apartments, which, like, those people made a killing and still charged less than uh, that. Everyone's, we have to pay in the summer. I'm like, it's still cheaper than living in the dorms. Uh, but anyways, though, yes. It's like, if anyone's had a little brother or a brother, sibling you've had to share a room with uh, and you want to start masturbating, you know, you know how the tricks can be. Um, you know, here's a couple, here's like, some advice uh, I give. I think when I was in college, I went, like, six months without jerking off. I just want, I don't know, I just... You know, you ever just lose, lose that, you know. I was also kind of Christian then, so. Uh, uh, but yeah, no. So, it's good to, one good thing is to just kind of understand your roommate's schedule. Uh, know when they'll be out and stuff like that. Um, so, that there's that. That can, that can always be an issue. Like, just knowing they're not there and, uh. You, you figure it out from there, like, okay, this I can masturbate this time, this time, okay, this time. Uh, you can also go to the bathroom. So we had bathrooms in our dorms, but I know a lot of them have communal bathrooms. Uh, you can always go into, you know, those. Uh, jerk off. I really do think the most optimal way to jerk off is, is on the toilet, like sitting on the toilet. You now you jerk off. And then you just uh, you spit it into uh, man proposes and God disposes. Do I have my, that's my hole? That's my hole. That, that's where it spits. Yeah, you, you spit it into the you spit it into the toilet. Uh, and then you maybe you may have to wipe it off with some TP. Uh, and then after that, you just flush it down. It's like easy cleanup. You know, it's usually just like a sticky thing on the end. You know, uh, but you, for the most part, it all shoots out into into the toilet. Perfect. Showers can get clogged. All right. You know, you can do it in the shower, too. If you can. I've never been good at shower jerks. 
it, it's just not me. Uh, but yeah, I've never been good at shower jerks, but uh, yeah, so you know, you figure that out, and uh, yeah, so you figure out a schedule. Uh, you get, there's also those areas you can also jerk off in, and uh, if you if you if your roommate's really cool, you could be like, hey man, I need to jerk off real quick. Uh, you want to leave the room for a couple minutes? I can leave the room. It's no big deal. You know, we all we all have to jerk. Men have to nut. It's just who it is. And then ladies, if you're listening to this, help a man jerk off. It doesn't have to do it inside you. You could you could it's, you know you know what I'm saying. Okay, here's our last question we got here. Uh, I want to start promoting. I want to start producing music as a hobby. Uh, where do I start? As background, I'm not a newbie. I used to play the drums when you, when younger, so at least I know the basics. So, um, one thing you are gonna have to realize is there's a lot of other resources than me, but let me get you uh, like some advice on where to start. Um, so if you're producing music, are you making like EDM music? Are you wanting to like record bands? Like what's your, you know, there's that. So there's going to be a lot of different aspects of what you'd probably need. What? Uh, in, in our order to get started there. So that's another thing. Um, always things I want to start off with, um, just to get you started. If you're starting from ground zero, uh, let's just see. I used to play drums. I don't think you're like, you're not like a guitar player or a piano player. Um, so here are things I would start out with. An audio interface is always a good thing to start out with. An audio interface is a way you can connect microphones uh, and or guitars or basses, you know, like with a line in and stuff like that, uh, straight into your computer. Uh, pretty pretty bland. There's a lot of options I could give you, but overall right now, uh, like a Focusrite Scarlett, those things are pretty... Is it Scarlett? Is that the cheap one? Like the not cheap one, but like the not very expensive one. Uh, Claret. That Claret's the expensive one. Scarlet's the good one. So, yeah, you always have that. And that's a good one, like two inputs, one inputs, no matter how much you need. Uh, and those will also help you with studio monitors when you get them and have a good headphone output, too. Um, either a good pair of headphones or some good monitors are going to be good for you. I would say uh, if you're low on money, start with the headphones and then upgrade to the monitors or just get monitors to begin with. Uh, just put the money down on it. Uh, microphones. Sometimes there's a condenser deal with the Focusrite Scarlet you can get, which is always a... I actually do think it's a very good deal. Uh, you get, like, a condenser microphone, which I think is really cool. You can get with that, so good microphone. Uh, you're planning on making, like, anything electronic music, you may need a MIDI keyboard. Uh, that'll connect to your computer, and you can use MIDI and stuff like that and start writing things with music. Um, you know, you're need, you know, probably XLR cables, quarter-inch cables, a, uh, uh, microphone stand. There's little things like that you're always thinking of. Uh, assume, I assume you probably already have a computer like that. Then you have to think of uh, software. They're called DAWs, D-A-W's, Digital Audio Workstations. I use Logic. I use that with music I record, and I also use it to record the audio for this podcast. Uh, if you have, a, It's only available on Mac. It's $200. Uh, there's Reaper. I've heard been hearing a lot more good things about Reaper lately. Uh, it's technically $80, but they let you... Extend your free trial for as long as you want. So, there's that. Uh, GarageBand comes with MacBooks, so those are always good. I think Reaper's also PC as well. If you're a PC, uh, I would say either Reaper or Ableton. I would say Ableton's good. I don't like FL Studio. Some guys do. I don't like FL Studio. Uh, don't go with Pro Tools. They're like, it's the industry standard. It's not the industry standard anymore. Uh, it's slow tools. It, just your projects crash too much with it. It's just it's just not worth using. I'm like I'd rather use Logic where things work and I can just continue to get keep going. So there's that. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how you get started. So you got to start with the gear, um, and then I would say uh, learn how all that stuff works. Uh, this is a podcast. I'm not probably not be able to get into everything right now. Uh, learn, you know, the tutorial, like watch logic tutorials. Like, and if you always have a question, there's a million logic tutorials and other DAW tutorials you can find online, uh, recording tutorials. Uh, if you're new to music, you don't understand how like the keyboard works. Maybe learn piano, learn the basics of that and stuff like that. Um, like that. And then just, you know, I like a uh, recording revolution is pretty good. Spectre sound media with Glenn Fricker. It's good. Uh, if you, if you're, if you, uh, if you cry when you hear cuss words, it's, he's not going to be good. Uh, 
That's what I like. Uh, Garage Band and Beyond's pretty good. Older stuff's kind of dated, but uh, newer stuff has been pretty good. So, uh, yeah, those are some some things on uh, my end to help you. I think that'll be that'll hopefully help you get started producing music. I don't necessarily know what music you're wanting to make or anything else with that, but hopefully that helps you get started. Uh, yeah, the first big step into getting into it uh, is putting a lot of money down. And so, I mean, I've just I've spent like thousands of dollars on gear. Like my this microphone's four hundred dollars. My interface is eight hundred dollars. Computer was like a thousand dollars when I got it. Uh, like monitors, I think both together, uh, three four hundred dollars. So I'm like it, it over time, and then I have other gear too. It's just stuff I've paid for over time and try to use. But I use it. I use it all the time, and uh, and I and I can say I do, and I do try to keep every. I try to get rid of things I don't ever use or won't ever use. So. That's things too. So you have to start out. A lot of times, people start off with cheap gear and upgrade little by little over time. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a daunting thing to to get into. But if you if you like it, you'll like it. So that's that's the dream, baby. Anyways, though, that's how we're ending today's episode of Cancel Schweezy, better known as the Lord's favorite podcast, uh, or the Lord's, the Lord's trademark favorite podcast, sorry, sorry, I don't want the trademark committee coming after me for the Lord, um, thank you so much, follow me on social media, at the Shweezy, my music under Shweezy, like I said, we got some new stuff coming up very, very soon, uh, twitch.tv slash the Shweezy, uh, go follow me over there, and subscribe if you have an Amazon Prime account that we can financially support us, like you can over on Patreon, our great tip bucket, uh, you know, I like that. And remember all the free shit. If you're on, on your audio platform, make sure you go check up our YouTube page and hit that subscribe button. We could really try to use that boost over there. And leave a comment, like, and share. You know, and everything, we post our highlights, so make sure you go check out that. Leave a comment. I want to hear your opinions. I always like to hear. We Typically, the comments I get are from very smart people, which I'm very surprised. So thank you for that. And share with your friends. Uh, leave us a review on the audio platforms and give us a 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1 star rating. So let's end this here, boys. Honk if you love butt drugs, and stay awesome. Believe it or not, Schweg is in at home. Please leave a message at the beep. I must be out, or I'd pick up the phone. Where could I be? Believe it or not, I'm not home. You just finished a full episode of Cancel Sweezy. You are now one of the smartest individuals who will ever exist in our world. Uh, if you like that episode, make sure you subscribe, whether you're watching this show or listening to the show, make sure you subscribe. That way you get notified whenever we release full new episodes as well. And if you're on YouTube, smash that bell button. That way you get notified anytime we make a post over here on YouTube. Uh, honk if you love butt drugs, and uh, yeah, stay awesome.